Why are Africans turning to Hindu? From a broad statistical standpoint, Hinduism's roughly 0.2% presence in Africa is seen as so inconsequential. Most data organizations don't even bother explicitly mentioning it in their census reports. Instead, they opt to clumps the religion, along with a medley of the continent's other minority faiths, into a 1% usually categorized as others, and simply leave it to that. Broad statistics, however, can sometimes be deceiving, especially when it comes to figures so large even mystical percentage are significant in terms of actual numbers. Such in case regarding Africa's Hindus, whose 0.2% population in context of continents 1.2 billion ends up being an estimated 2.5 million. As such, Hinduism, though, is sparsely practiced throughout the continent in comparison to religions like Islam and Christianity, can be found in notable pockets, pockets in which the culture, despite seeing out of place, is expressed just as beautifully as anywhere else in the world. While the scattered Hindus of these pockets can make understanding Hindu story a somewhat complex endeavor, a handful of most noteworthy of these pockets can still give an overarching view of what this story entails. So let us talk about many countries in Africa where Hinduism is getting popularized. So first is South Africa. Before the Union of South Africa was founded in 1910, the area was made up of four separate British colonies, Cape, Transvaal, Orange River and Natal. It was in the last colony Natal, now part of KwaZulu, Natal province, that Hinduism really began taking root in the African mainland. The government needing a cheap replacement for labor plantation, owners lost after slavery was abolished for the British Empire, decided to do what several other colonies had already began doing, import Indian national under a system of indentured servitude. After that, the Hindus' population start increasing in South Africa as well. Concerning by the possibility that Natal could become majority Indian if its growth remained steady, in 1891, the government decided to revoke the promise it made regarding the gifting of land and citizenship. Regardless of this move, India made up almost half of Natal's population by 1893, and by 1904, they actually outnumbered the white. By 1911, after all the colonies joined to become the Union of South Africa, thereby putting an end to Natal's indentureship in program, the colony had been the recipient of more than 115,000 Indian immigrants. And now, Durban is home to most of South Africa's 1.3 million Hindus, making it, according to some sources, the largest Indian city outside of India and thus the most powerful hub of Hindu practice, Mauritius. One Natal was the first British colony in the mainland to become part of Indian independent servant program. It was actually Mauritius, the island located roughly 1,200 miles off the southeastern coast that was the first British colony in Africa to start importing Indian workers in the new post slavery system. Because of this, Mauritius Indian population safety grew despite Parliament having to pause the program for two years due to ill treatment of workers like it later had to in South Africa as 700,000 neighbors migrated to the island between 1834 to 1920. Today, 50% of Mauritius 1.3 million population is Hindu, making it the only African country in which Hinduism is the religion with the largest number of followers. The island as a result is sometimes referred to as Little India. Now Uganda. Generally speaking of the story of Hinduism in Uganda begins in somewhere similar fashion to that of South Africa and Mauritius or any other British colony. Requiring cheap labour for the construction of Uganda railways, the British imported around 40,000 Indian workers in the 1890s. After completing the project in 1902, a majority of labourers returned to India, while a small percentage opted to stay and continue work in railway and other British operations like retail and administration. Unfortunately, the period after colonialism was also one in which discrimination against India rose to particularly high levels, as part of the policies of various East African governments who felt that indigenous Africans should be at forefront of the economy. Such policies reached their culmination in 1972 
when a military dictator general idi amin announced that all of the indian origin people living in iwada numbering by that time almost 80000 had to leave the country if after 90 days any of them were still there they would as he put it be made feel as they were sitting on fire as leaving their businesses and homes to be seized by government all the regions indian mass migrated to them mainly of other countries including 20000 to united kingdom 2000 to india and around 8000 to canada there after faced with a shortage of skilled professionals the expulsion of indian actually caused uganda to fall into a financial crisis resulting in long term economic devastation 20 years after the exodus uganda reverses its law banning indians offering to give back this seized property it hopes they would turn and reinvigorate the economy by recreating employment having already rebuilt their lives in other parts of the world however a majority who left uganda in 72 decided to quickly sell their reclaimed property and not move back there was on other hand a minority who indeed returned to some even reposing the businesses they originally owned now numbering 30000 uganda indians once again hold controlling stakes in various sector of economy and employing more than 1 million indigenous people also contributing to more than 65% of con- country's domestic revenue fourth ghana ghana hindu community from a broad perspective is made up of two distinct groups indians and indigenous africans both of whom get along very well regularly sharing spaces of worship and occasionally belling together to host various teachers or dignitaries as such hinduism began taking hold among ghana's native so much so that the indigenous hindu community now actually outnumbers the indian community and hinduism as a whole is the country's fastest growing religion thank you for your time